Hi, I'm Sandy Peterson, and we're going to talk about the new Peterson Games release, Dysonstein. First off, I want to say that this is obviously a prototype, and the actual game is going to be a typical Peterson Games quality. Instead of a hand-drawn map, obviously, it's going to have um, dice that are larger than this and aren't made of stickers on the dice. They're going to be, you know, printed with the stuff on them. Um, but there's going to be this many dice. and. Uh, we're gonna have counters and all these things, so just watch for the, like, it, you'll see what it's like on the Kickstarter, but it's gonna be cool. So, um, first off, the basic game setup. This is the graveyard. Uh, this is all grayed in, but the real one's gonna have colored gravestones and stuff to make it even easier to tell apart. Over here is the victory point track. Down here is the burial key, which we use uh, at the start of the game to set up to, to seed the map with monster parts, and then um, throughout the game we use it to build to score points for our monster army. So uh, let's talk about seeding the map. One of the early steps of Dyson Sign is to seed the map with monster parts. You only do this once, you never have to worry about it again. In the actual game, you're going to have counters that you're going to put in your handy dandy bag, and you're going to pull out 12 counters. And uh, if you have more than 12 monsters in your, um, in your game, which is going to be pretty common for guys that back the Kickstarter, then just the first 12 count. But we're going to use cards because we are low tech. So my lovely assistant Lincoln is going to take a card and pull it and put it on one of the spots. So we have the unicorn. So the unicorn is on the sarcophagus. So we put three dice on each sarcophagus on the map. Okay, what's our next one? Gargoyle. The gargoyle, okay. It's on the weird angel. It's on the squiggly angel. Okay, put three there, um, three there, and three there. Next. Vampire. The vampire. The vampire is on the urn. Uh, the urn, okay. And I'm gonna, and then we just keep doing this. It's actually faster when you have more than one person doing it. So we've seeded the entire map. We never have to seed it again. Usually, typically, with three or four people all helping with seeding the map, it takes about 45 seconds. So it's not really a big delay. Okay, now, on your turn, we have monster stats. And so we're gonna talk about them. So we're gonna look at our starting monster. It's always a hunchback, because you don't have any monster part yet to experiment with. So, the stats. We have health, rerolls, kind of a brains sort of stat. His dig ability, which is how good it is at digging up parts for your monster. His movement, and his attack. So. Each part of the hunchback, each monster has four parts. They have a head, a body, a hand, and a foot. And each of those parts contribute to his total. So we'll look at the hunchback. The hunchback's head has one point of health, but no brains, because he's just a hunchback, right? Okay, then we have the body of the hunchback is four more health. So it goes up to five. It also gives one point of dig and one point of movement. The hand of the health of the hunchback adds another point of dig and one point of attack. The foot of the hunchback adds one more health, bringing it up to six. One more dig, bringing it up to three. One more movement gives him two. So his final score is a health of six, uh, rerolls brains of zero, a dig of three, which is pretty good. The starting monster can dig well. A move of two and an attack of one. Uh, the hunchback's generally a terrible monster. You want to get improve as quickly as you can. Um, so that's the start. And uh, we're going to then move on from here. Okay, another thing you do at the very start is you are handed three cards with the names of three of the monsters that are in your game. And you look through these three cards and you pick one of them to throw away and you keep the others. So I have here, I have a swarm and a clown and a gargoyle. And I'm going to throw away the gargoyle and keep the, no one knows what I threw away. But, I mean, you guys do, but me, but I'm keeping the Swarm of the Clown. That's my, that's gonna be the monsters that I wanna collect from my secret monster army. I don't reveal these till the end of the game, okay? And when I do, they give, but I'm, but decisions I make through the game be affected by it. So I value clowns and swarms more than any, slightly more than the other players, but they don't know that unless they can figure it out by where I'm digging. Okay, so, rules of the game. You start your turn with the monster army phase. In the monster army phase, if you have monster parts in your collection, you are allowed to turn them in for points. 
You basically turn in one group of monster parts, it scores you points on the victory point track, and you are advancing your way to the end. Okay, at the start of the game, we have no monster parts, so I can't, the monster armor phase is cancelled on me. Then I get to move and attack. Okay, the hunchback moves two, so I can go two squares. So that means I can start, start from, the, from my lair, I can go one, two, or one, two, or one, two, or I can just go one and stop there if I want. But I'm going to go to here, and now there's no other monsters around, I can't find me when I was the first player, so I get to dig. To dig, you pick up all the dice that are in the tile, and then you put them in the bag. You shuffle them up, un unable to see them, and you pull, and my, I have a dig of three, so I pull out three dice. I got a werewolf and two plant, two uh, mermen. I keep those as my dig, because my dig was three, and the other six dice go back in the area. And I, they don't have to be sorted, they can be, uh, okay, that was, they can, they can be jumbled, it doesn't really matter, okay? Then on my next turn, I can move again. Say, for example, I could move here, do another dig, pick, this time pick up six dice, because that's all there was in the area, put them in, grab three of them, and we got two gargoyles and a giant mantis, and then the other three dice go back. Then on my third turn, if I really like the idea of getting gargoyles and giant mantis, I can stay there, and I can pl pick up these three dice, and I don't need to put them in the bag, because I get to keep three, so I'll just, I'll just take them, all right? Now, on, while you're moving around and digging, one of the other activities you can do is fight. So for example, on my turn, uh, like I'm here, this guy's gonna go, he can move to here first as his first movement point, and then we fight, okay? Fighting is done, we look at our attack stats, which in this case is one because we're both hunchback. I would roll an attack die. The attack die has three possible results. There's a critical hit for two points of damage, there's a regular hit for one point of damage, and there's a miss for, you know, zero points of damage. I roll that one die. My enemy does two, he'll be the enemy's die, and he got a hit. Here's my die, and I got a hit. Okay, now, your reroll stat at this point lets you reroll a number of dice equal to what you, equal to your reroll. So for example, if I rolled four dice, and my reroll was two, I could pick up two it like this, I could pick up two of the dice and re-roll them. I got a critical hit and two regular hits. I think I'd just pick up this one to re-roll, right? And I got another blank, so what the heck. But that's how the re-roll works. Hunchbacks have no re-roll, so I'm just stuck with a single hit. Each of us take one damage, and we are lowered to five. This player can then keep on moving, okay? So then he can go here, and he can dig here and get some dice, all right? Now, ultimately, you're going to want to go back to your lair. Especially since your hunchback has a, a special ability, which is called disloyalty. And what it means is at the end of each turn, he takes two damage. So eventually he basically becomes disloyal and runs away, you don't have a hunchback anymore. But you get to keep all the dice he collected for you. <coughs> so when, he's, when he vanishes, you still have these dice. And, it's, and you then get the final lab phase in which you can roll dice to make a new monster. Let's do that. Roll the dice to make a new monster, and the goal here is we're trying to get all the body parts of our monster. So I'm going to pick a gargoyle claw, and you put them right on the slab where the hunchback was, and a werewolf foot, because why not, right? And a uh, an insect, a giant mantis body, and it looks like I was unlucky and did not roll another head on all my dice, which is bad. So you've got to keep a hunchback head. I then add up the monster's new stats, which are different. One health for the hunchback head. Eight more health for the mantis body. That's how cool mantis are. I get a dig and a move from the mantis. My attack is three. And I get another health for the gargoyle hand. I get another move from the gargoyle. The werewolf gives me an extra dig. Three more movement. And another attack. Okay, at this point, all the dice give me <coughs> their special ability. <coughs> Every monster has his own ability. The um, Mantis' ability, for example, is that he has no central nervous system. When he's killed, he can stay on the map for one more turn. The Gargoyle special ability is that he's able to move diagonally because he can fly, which really helps you get around the map. And the Werewolf's ability is that after you do all the calculations, you add one more to your attack because he has uncontrolled race. So my attack is actually five. So now I have a pretty kick butt monster. So I'm going to come back onto the map with my mover to five, and I, and I can move diagonally too. So I'm going to start here and move diagonally to here and attack this guy who attacked me before. But now, I get five dice. He's only a hunchback, he still gets one. So I roll my five dice, and I get 
What? No brain still? Oh well, no rerolls. But I got seven damage on him. He then rolls his one dice back at me and gets a hit. I go from ten to nine. But he's killed. When you kill another monster, you score four victory points, and you get to take one of his dice as a trophy. Now, in this case, since he's a hunchback, he has the dice as a trophy, but at least I got the four victory points. My turn's not over yet. That was only the first movement point. I have four more because of my great movement of five. So I can go one, two, three, four, and dig over there. Or if there's another monster on the map, I could go attack him, a, a second attack, and go somewhere else and dig. I can do all kinds. Of, this is a very powerful monster. Its only real limitation is the hunchback head, which means he's going to take two damage each turn until he falls apart. But with ten health, it'll take a while for even that to affect me. I should be able to get back home and be safe before it occurs. So. That is how that phase works. Now, there's a final monster army phase at the end of the turn. If I go back to my lab, without not because I was killed, just because I voluntarily came back, my monster falls apart, all the dice come off, and I get to do two things. First, there's the monster army phase. I can turn in dice to get victory points. Second, I can roll the dice and build me a new monster. So. This time I have all the body parts, so I'll be a lot better monster. Um, I have a merman head, even. Uh, I knocked it over, but I had, promise I had a merman head. Um, that's how that works. Now, each monster has its own special ability, as I mentioned, and so you're benefited by making not a pure monster, but a monster head that has all the different parts, because that way you get all of the abilities of all the monsters, four abilities. If I built a pure werewolf, I would only have one ability, Rage. By building a, a, a mer, bug, gargoyle werewolf, I get four abilities, which is much stronger. The final thing I want to talk about is scoring those monster army parts. Here is how it works. There's two ways of getting victory points in the game. The first is when you kill, well actually three ways. The first way is whenever you kill an enemy monster, you get four points. That's an obvious way of getting it. Your goal is to get to 20. The other way is by turning in groups of monsters. Hey, so I'm going to explain about the monster army and how it works, your second way of scoring points. Um, you'll see that as we, when we seeded the map, the monsters got categorized into different areas. The top level monsters up here, which in this case is the unicorn, gargoyle, vampire, and swarm, are four parts for five victory points. So when I do a turn in, whether I do it at the start of my turn when I leave my lab, or the end of my turn when I go back into my lab, and you have to either be, you have to be in the lab at some point to use to get a turn in. You can turn in four parts of these monsters for five victory points. You take, you have to take them out of your lab, and you toss them out of the game forever. So you're decreasing your pool for building your next monster, but you're scoring points, so there's always like a decision to be made there. So in this case, it doesn't, you don't have to do it all at the same time. I don't have to put in four unicorn parts. So here I've got two unicorn parts, one vampire, and one gargoyle. That's four pieces, I get five points. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the second level monsters, it's three for three. So for example, if I had two invisible men and a werewolf die, that would be three from that category. That would only score me three points. The third level monsters are kind of like down in the ghetto, the plant man and mummy. Two of those gives you one point, so they're not that valuable. And at the bottom, the dregs of the monsters, the merman, clown, and giant mantis are worth zero points. Now, one of the things you gotta understand about this is that every game you play, this setup's gonna be different. Not only will you have different monsters, but they'll be in different places. So next time I play, in fact, the last two times I played, the clown was in the top level. This time he happens to be at the bottom, but that's not always how it is. So, so your values of the monsters change and mutate as you're going, and uh, you have to uh, be aware of that. There is also, the monster are the monster bosses and these are a one-time turn-in if you do this as one of your turn-ins <coughs> you take the monster boss marker flip it over and it's used you can't use it again so with this one this monster boss is turning any seven parts for six victory points this is turn in five for four turn in three for two and it can be any parts including the ostensibly worthless parts down here so I could turn in three giant mantis three mermen and one plant man for this. That's seven parts, I'd get six victory points. So the, worth, the worthless monster is still valuable for these, okay? So you're doing turn-ins during the game, you're fighting and hopefully killing enemy monsters, and the final way you score points is, you may recall, the secret monster army. These don't score till the end of the game. 
At the end of the game, you reveal your secret monster army. In my case, it was the clown and the swarm. So all the clown and swarm dice I have left in my lab, I then turn in for one point each. So in this case, I have three clown, two swarm. I turn them in, I score five points. And uh, I just have that. Now, the, the reason these are better than a regular turn-in is not only are they generally higher points for everything except for the very top level turn-in, but you don't have to leave they don't have to leave your pool. You can keep them in your pool and keep building monsters and using their parts until the end of the game. So they're very handy to have. And that's how that goes. When a player reaches 20, or higher than 20 by doing turn-ins or victory points, at that point he can do a secret monster turn-in, and then each other player gets one more turn. Usually these final turns are really short. Uh, to score a few more points, and then when we finish, we see who has the highest total, and that is a game of dice and sign. Typically takes about 40 minutes to an hour to play. Uh, and, uh, I haven't seen many games that are an hour, but if your friends are especially subject to analysis paralysis, you might see a whole hour long. So every game is different because you're collecting different assortments of dice when you're building your monster because the values of the monster in points are different every game. So the ones you're targeting are different because your secret mar monster army is different every game. And because if you have more than 12 monsters, which you're certain to do if you have the Kickstarter because you get you not only get the 12 monsters in the game, but if you've got nothing else, you get the free exclusive monsters that we had. Then uh, every time you play, you could have a different assortment of 12 monsters. Uh, we plan to ultimately have a lot of monsters available for the game, so the games will be really varied with lots of cool abilities and uh, interactions in your in your strange hybrid monsters fighting with your enemies for their monsters, stealing their body parts when you defeat one of them, uh, trying to squabble over the best uh, digging places, and uh, it's a lot of action, and I think you'll enjoy it.